Last up is our concept of the limiting reactant. So we got two things to consider. One is the theoretical yield. Everything we've been doing so far has been a theoretical yield. It assumes that our reaction goes 100% to completion. Uh, there are no side processes, no inefficiencies in it. It is the maximum amount of product that can be obtained from a given amount of a limiting reactant. Our percent yield is the actual amount obtained, and it's always going to be less than the theoretical yield. I'll put always in here. Right. So sometimes you may get a percent yield that is over 100%, but usually there is something that has gone on uh, besides that. So like if you've got a filtration apparatus set up in lab and you're doing a vacuum filtration and whatever this is in here, you're trying to collect this solid and you're pouring some water in there from a beaker and this thing doesn't dry out completely, you may have excess water in here. Right? But your, your reaction itself is always going to be less than 100%. What you're measuring may look like it's bigger. Well, then you've got to figure you've got some sort of experimental error in there. All right. So our actual yield over theoretical yield times 100 is our percent yield. So steps in this are basically the same. You're still going to write out a balanced chemical equation in step zero. You're going to convert your masses of your substances into moles. You're going to figure out which guy is limiting. You're going to use the amount of the limiting reactant to figure out the number of moles of the desired product. You're going to convert that moles of product to grams using the molar mass. Then you just tack on one extra step where you do, you know, actual, which you might be given probably, uh, over the theoretical times 100 to, comp to compute your percent. <coughs> so which of the following reaction mixtures produces the greatest amounts of product? Each involves the reaction symbolized by the following reaction. If I got two moles of H2 and two moles of O2, two of H2 and three of O2, two of o H2 and one of O2, or three moles of H2 and one mole of O2, of O2, and you got to figure out which one's going to give you the most. So it's really asking what is the limiting reactant in this problem. So if you were starting off with uh, two moles of H2 and two moles of O2, you're going to be able to produce two moles of H2O, and you're going to have some excess O2. And if you've got two moles of H2 and three moles of O2, you're going to end up with excess O2. All right, and it's still going to be limited by the H2, and you still produce two. And we got two moles of H2 and one mole of O2. That's balancing the stoichiometry. If I got three moles of H2, I've got lots of H2 and one mole of O2. My O2 is the limiting reactant again. Um, so, you know, you got you got to look at what your mole ratio is and how much are you producing at the end. Right? You know that chemical A reacts with chemical B. You can react 10 grams of A with 10 grams of B. What information do you need to know in order to determine the mass of the product that will be produced? Well, you got to know a couple of things. You need to know the mole ratio between A and B. Right? So this is coming from our balanced chemical equation. You're also going to need to know what ratio those things are with your product that is formed. So that's also part of your balanced chemical equations. Right? You need to know the molar masses of A, B, and P, the product, right? if you want to figure out the mass of product. You can figure out the moles and not know the mole to mole, mole ratio of P here, or the molecular mass of P, but you're definitely going to need to know moles of A and moles of B and a balanced chemical equation to do anything that has both A and B. Right. So here's a summary of our problem-solving strategy involving masses of reactants and products. Step zero, find the balanced chemical equation, because that is going to give you the multiple -mole ratio between A and B and C and D between your products and your reactants. Right? You use your moles of desired substance and your mole ratio between that and your limiting reactant, whatever that may be. Then you're going to figure out the moles of your product, convert that into grams. Let's do a real quick example with limiting reactants. So we've got methanol. It's the simplest alcohol. It's used as a fuel in race cars and in monster trucks uh, and is a potential replacement for gasoline. It's horribly fuel efficient, at least according to the 
podcast I was listening to on monster trucks. Methanol can be manufactured by combining gaseous carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Suppose you got 68.5 grams of carbon monoxide reacted with 8.6 grams kilograms of hydrogen. Calculate the theoretical yield of methanol. If you get 3.57 times 10 to the 4 grams of methanol produced for real, what's your percent yield? So your process here is going to be you know, zero, find your balanced chemical equation. One, do mass to moles. Uh, two, you're going to look at your mole to mole ratios. Three, you're going to convert to grams if you need to. Uh, in between here, between two and three, that's where you're going to identify your limiting reactant. Right From there, you, you'll figure out what your percent yield is, a step four. Okay. So our primary objective is to calculate the theoretical yield of the methanol, and then we're going to calculate the percent yield of methanol. So we've got two goals, right? I can't do the second one until after I've done the first. So our chemical reaction is H2 plus CO gas gives us CH3OH. Right, we know the mass of the carbon dioxide and the uh, hydrogen, and we also know how much at the end of this CH3OH is produced. But this is not going to be part of our theoretical component. Right? We're going to use these guys in our theory, and this is our actual. Well, actually, so there are things we'll need, balanced chemical equation, Moles of H2, moles of CO2. We'll need to figure out which is the limiting reactant, how much methanol it's produced. Okay? So step number one, we've got to find the limiting reactant. We've got to first balance the chemical equation, and we end up with H 2H2 plus CO gives us CH3OH. Right? Then we need to identify the molar masses, which is used for periodic table, which will help us define the moles. So we've got, we got two, two grams per mole for our H2, and 28 grams per mole for our carbon monoxide. We take our 68.5 grams of carbon monoxide, convert that into grams here, right? Gram, kilograms to grams. We use our molar mass to convert our grams into moles. So we got the moles of CO. We take our mass of hydrogen, convert that from kilograms to grams. And then use our molecular mass for hydrogen to convert that into moles of hydrogen. All right? We figure out which limiting reactant to which one is the limiting reactant either by this ratio method, so determine the mole ratio between the H2 and the CO, right? And the balanced chemical equation, that's a two to one ratio. And then you can compare the mole ratio of the H2 and the CO required by the equation with the actual mole ratio. So we take our moles of H2 divided by our moles of CO2 required. That's 2 to 1 ratio, so 2. We take our moles of H2 divided by our moles of CO so and that we actually have. So we do our 4.27 times 10 to the third divided by 2.44 times 10 to the third. And we get a ratio that's not the same, so we know it's not at our stoichiometric level. Right, we need, we've either got an under or an excess. The actual mole ratio is smaller, so H2 is limiting. All right, so I've got more of this and less of this. Determination of the limiting reactant using the quantities of products performed. So again, this is the way I like to do it. We take our 2.44 times 10 to the third moles of CO2. All right, we look at the mole to mole ratio here, and we end up with 2.44 times 10 to the third moles of ethanol that we could produce. If we look at our hydrogen and assume that it's limiting, and we've got lots of ethanol, we take our 4.27 times 10 to the third moles, divide by two, and we get 2.14 times 10 to the third moles of methanol. The complete consumption of H2 produces a smaller amount of CH3OH. Right. Then we got to figure out the number of moles of methanol produced. So we take our moles of hydrogen, which is our limiting reactant. Right. We look at our balanced chemical equation that says 1 to 2. 
and then we multiply by whatever they're going to multiply it by to give us the mol it's going to give us the moles. So 2.14 times 10 to the third moles of methanol. Step two, we're going to determine the theoretical yield of methanol in grams from letting the, the limited amount of moles down here get multiplied by the molecular weight of the methanol. So 32.4 grams per mole times 2.14 mole times 10 to the third moles gives us 6.86 times 10 to the fourth grams of methanol. So our theoretical yield is going to be 8.64 times 10 to the four grams. Then you guys got to do in the next part our percent yield. So you take your actual grams, which is given at 3.7 times 10 to the four, and then you're going to divide it by your theoretical yield in grams, which we just figured out. 8.6 times 10 to the four, we do the division times 100, and we end up with 52. Grams per mole. I mean, there's other ways you could ask that question. Right? This was a straightforward. You were given A and T right, times 100 equals percent yield. Right? You could be given, you know, you could find Y. Right? That was the easy one that we just did. You, know, you could find the actual amount given the theoretical amount and the uh, percentage. Uh, you could find the theoretical yield given the actual amount and the and the uh, percent yield. That's a lie. All right, so that's it for our stoichiometry.